Sure. Like to call the workshop to uh, to begin. I'll stay for the pledge, please. I can't see the clock from here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and is as well with liberty and justice for all. All right, please. Maybe we can begin. At this time, I will turn this over to Mr. Cowan for his budget presentation. Okay, let me bring this up to share. If um, Judy and Mike, you want to swing over, you can, but it's up to you. We do have the presentation in front of you, so be okay where you are at. Okay. All right. So a lot of this, and I think we have enough for you all if you want. <laughs> a lot of this won't be new to the board because we've been talking about budgets since really October 10th. Um, and numbers are similar, maybe not exactly the same. But um, we'll go over that. And the presentation was sent to the board members ahead of time. They do know what's coming at them this, after, this evening. So um, I'll just kind of go over it. And first, a first look at the budget for 24-25 will be a $26,878,000 budget, up about $1.9 million from our current budget, up about $25 million. Now, this budget has a couple of things in it that the prior budget did not. Well, one, the, the major thing is that we've talked about many times are the positions that were first funded through the pandemic relief grants. Those funds or those positions have been funded with uh, uh, monies outside of the general fund. Grants are going away in 24-25. Those positions are captured in this budget for um, next year, next year at this point in time. So at this point in time, we're looking at about a 7% seven and a half seven point seven percent budget increase on the expenditure side i'll go we'll go over each of these items over the next several meetings uh, we'll talk salaries and benefits at the next meeting and we'll hit each of them as the um uh, budget schedule uh lays it out <clears throat> Charlie, can i ask a question you sure can okay now the, the one million nine forty is absorbed the positions they are built in there yes. that was funded that were funded with federal funds Correct. Okay. What was that amount? That is about three hundred thousand. I think it's about. I think it's two ninety five. Is the number? Okay, thank you. And then the other increases are, you know, salary increases that just happened because of the year, the roll over the year benefits, different things. You can see debt services up pretty significantly, about six six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We'll start paying for the capital project next year. We'll also start to see uh, state aid for that. So. That will help to offset the increase on the uh, debt service at least. So the increase uh, about 7.78%, uh, we're looking at $26.9 million budget. The resources to pay for that, and this was an estimate, best guess as we started the process back in October, and I haven't changed them, though Mr. Staten did share with me tonight, the governor released her budget today and the aid runs um, were given at five o'clock, I think. Um, the preliminary numbers there are not favorable to even, to even this $15.5 million, but we'll get into that in future meetings. Um, but these are the resources that cover a 26 or a cover of a budget. So $26.8 million, we need to get money. We, we, we funded by state aid. We receive some other revenues, rental of, of um, classrooms. We get a refund from BOCES. We get some Medicare um, reimbursement for our drugs, our drug cards that the retirees have, et cetera. Um, so that's that's decreased. And again, we'll talk about these things in the future. We're keeping our fund balance use at the $827,000 number. If those resources came in at that level and we kept the budget of $26.8 million, our tax levy would need to be $9,741,000, about a 13.16% um, levy increase. Um, when this was first presented in October at the October 10th meeting, that number was 14.37%. So when we look back at our budget and these numbers here, it isn't simply a rollover of the budget and what we have this year. As I told you, 
We've got positions that were part of, that were funded with grant monies in the past have been added in here, but some things have been taken out. We know of a retirement that will happen in 24, 25 because of the um, negotiations with the teachers unit. Um, that's already taken into account. And there's a couple of things in here and we'll go over them in future at future meetings, but it's not simply everything that we've got this year is included in next year. That was what I had at the 14.37 back in October. We've taken uh, some of those things out through discussions with administration, and now we're at that 13.16%. 13.16 still a long ways from where we need to be, and it gets more difficult because sometimes we usually show you guys a budget at this point in time that says, here's what we are at, and we'll have some retirements. We already know what retirements are guaranteed for next year, really only one, um, and that's already built into this budget at this time. So 13.16 if our other numbers came in at these levels. Any questions on the revenue side? Okay. What will our tax levy be? Lindsay. I'm oh, sorry. What, how come our other revenues went down by almost $200,000? Okay. Um, and I'll talk about all of these things in future meetings, but I'll, I'll certainly address that. Um, what we've included in there in the last couple of budgets is some of the monies that were available through the pandemic relief. Um, we had positions that have always been in the general fund that were budgeted or paid for with grant monies. They were included in that other revenues the last couple of years. As the grant monies go away, that has to disappear for us as well. Yeah. So. Okay. Our practice has typically been to stay in the tax gap. This is a preliminary number because we don't have all of the details at this point in time, but if we looked at what the calculated tax cap would be for 2024-25, it would be the $8,793,000, an increase of about 2.15%. And you can see it's been in that range in recent years. 2.16% um, is what it was for this year that we're in. You can't touch those screens, can you? This is Babby. Um, <laughs> 2.16% is what it is this year. It was two and a half the year before. A couple of years ago, it was that 0.19. We went out at 2% and the community did approve that. But we've typically been right around that two to two and a half percent in the tax levy, in the tax cap era. We had a high of 4.17 several years back. Um, that it was also part of the tax cap era. But so 8,793 would be the amount that we could levy if we were to stay within the tax cap. The amount that we can stay within the tax cap, this 9741 was that preliminary number that I had talked about two slides ago. So we're going in at this point in time at about a $950,000 budget gap. We often always go in with a budget gap at this point in time. This is more than, than normal, I will say. And a lot of that has to do with the additional positions that are built into the budget that have been paid for with the grant funds in the past. So that $948,000 to balance that, what do we need to do? We need to look at our expenditures and reduce them by an amount equal to $950,000 perhaps, or we can look at our resources and see what can be increased there or a combination of the, of the two of them to get to that number that would bring this down to the tax cap calculated levy of that $8,740,000, I think it was. Um, a, a difficult task. And a lot of that is that we've been talking about has to do with those positions that uh, we would like to keep. Administration has talked several times and it discussed it with the board I, under, I, I as well. Um, you know, some of these positions, remedial reading, remedial math, uh, an elementary um, guidance counselor position are positions that administration feels are critical to keep for uh, the school district going forward. So if we can't find $950,000 or if we, a proposal that could be made would be to do something along these lines. And keeping in mind, this is the proposal of this time, the Board of Education has the final say in everything. Um, but again, after this year, grant monies disappear from the pandemic relief. That will create a funding cliff. Positions that have been paid for will no longer be paid for by any outside resources. There's not more state aid coming from New York State. It doesn't appear to cover these costs that were added on during the pandemic. So to cover them, it would require us to take that in as part of our uh, tax levy. That, as I said to, to Mr. Dicatera, was about $295,000 or is about 3.43% on the tax levy. 
Earlier, we talked about the tax cap being 2.15%. Basically, if we wanna keep those positions and without them, we would stay at the tax cap. In, in, in traditional years, the board would say, stay at the tax cap. There was that 0.19% year, the board was good with going out at 2%. But other than that, when we've been at two or, met or better, the Board of Education has always said, we need to stay at the tax cap. A proposal for next year would be, if we want to keep those positions, we would ask the Board of Education to consider a tax levy increase that would be a 5.5% uh, increase. So there, you can kind of do the math. Those positions would be about 3.4%, 2.15% is our tax cap. You bring them together, we would look at five and a half percent to go out to the community. That would require that super majority, 60% approval, as you're well aware. Um, I'll stop at this moment to see if there's any thoughts from the Board of Education or I can continue on, if not. So even with that, if we were to go out at five and a half percent, that does not mean all budget concerns are behind us. You know, that still leaves us with a levy of a uh, gets us to a levy of a little over nine million dollars. That preliminary plan said we still needed nine point seven million dollars. So we're still looking at a gap of six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Have we started years in past with a six hundred and fifty thousand dollar gap? Yes, we have. Are there some things that we know we will be able to absorb? Um, to uh, to alleviate some of that yes we do know that there are um but at the same time you know <laughs> as mr staten had showed me the the state aid runs um that 15 and a half million dollars is not the number that the governor has made in her proposal to us for next year so some things that we know we couldn't help to we could do to help uh reduce this gap are certainly in the back of our minds but there are some other unknowns at this point in time that may cause that to increase as well and depending on where things play out you know, this may be an extremely difficult budget year. So what does that do for us? It would allow us to keep the remedial math, the remedial reading and a counseling position, um, and those services. I won't say it necessarily means every single one of those positions. And it, what it doesn't mean is that we are all set with a budget for 24-25, as you can clearly see. pitch for an increase of that five and a half percent beyond the positions that are being added. If you look at this chart, the decade before the tax cap was in place, the increases are plotted out here from a low of 1.48% to a high of 12.91%. You take the average of those 10 years, the levy increase was 5.16%. In the 12 years since the tax cap has been in place, we've had that high of 4.17%. Typical years in, in the two range, you know, a couple of years you see over, but the average of that 12 year is 2.45% is or less than half of what it was the decade before the tax cap was in place. So information and an argument for why things are tight as they are and why we should, why five and a half percent does make sense, you know. Our revenues have gotten tighter in the tax cap era as they have for most school districts. Our state aid does not increase significantly. Our foundation aid, we've been off formula um, for many years. Uh, we have not seen significant increases in that state aid. Rev expenditures do go up as we would expect, you know, when we look at health insurance and other benefits um, in the five plus percent range, including health insurance, uh, pension, uh, pension contributions, um, uh, salaries, et cetera. So when we know our expenditures are increasing at greater than three, four, five percent, but our revenues are not at more than two to three percent, the gap certainly uh, continues to widen from year to year. Questions on the budget at this point in time? Again, this is a high level overview. We'll get into the details of the different parts of the expenditures with the next uh, meeting. We'll talk about salaries and benefits and I believe debt service. Um, and then we'll go through each area. As we go through each area, we'll talk about the recommendations from the admi from administration of any uh, cuts or uh, revisions that they would have in mind, and they can be discussed with the board of it by the board of education. Just a couple of other small points, or not so small, but I don't want to take you by surprise as we get along in the budget process. In addition to the community voting on a budget that third Tuesday in May. We've always put before them a referendum to approve um, bus purchases. 
our proposal this year would be to buy two buses at uh, two full size buses at a cost not to exceed three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That three fifty would buy will buy us two diesel buses. We know with what the electric bus um, scenarios are right now. Who knows where they're going to play out? But there are grants available, and we are in the process. We've applied for those grants. We talked with our bond council. It gets pretty complicated when you try to buy a, a an electric bus, but you don't. Uh, disclose that in your uh, vote to the, in your uh, referendum to the voters. It'll be complicated, so we'll talk about that in much more detail if we do go down the path of perhaps asking the community to approve not only a diesel bus but also an electric bus um, as the two buses that we would buy. Lastly, um, before this year, we had done capital outlay projects, hundred thousand dollar projects. We'd uh, refurbished the two. Um, elevators in the elementary school. We put that on pause this year because we knew that we had the debt service from phase two coming on um, and we didn't have the state aid until next year. So the, the money that we had was used to offset that debt service for phase two in 23-24. I'd like to at least give it a shot to get the capital outlay project back online for 24-25 if we can find a way to do that without impacting the tax, the, the taxpayers at all, you know, and it's a possibility. It's something we'll talk about in more detail as we go down, but I do want to bring it to your attention now so that if I do bring that out um, three meetings from now and say, we'd like to add that hundred thousand dollars. And this is where we're going to get the funds to pay for it. You're, you're aware that uh, it's something in mind. With that, if there are questions, I'll take them. The board can discuss what they'd like to, but um you know, we've made a recommendation of that five and a half percent. As I said, Mr. Staten shared the uh, state aid uh, runs with me earlier. Um, I don't know if it was my dinner, if it was the state aid runs, but my stomach isn't feeling so good now. But um, in any case, any questions that you have, I'll be happy to answer. Or you guys can discuss what you like. Well, for discussion purposes only. You know, I've expressed this before. I, I'm i worried. I think a 5.5% increase can divide a community. And I, I worry about that. I don't think it's a unanimous yes. I think it's, it's going to cause a great deal of concern amongst different components and of the community. And I, I worry about that. I think asking 5.5 in this in this time is very difficult because as you see our costs go up but people at home their their salaries aren't going very high either right now but their expenditures are much higher because you as we all know approaches is higher gas is higher heating is higher like everything is higher so to come in community and ask them for a 5.5 percent increase i think is is asking a lot without going. I know nobody in an administration and nobody wants to say that anybody's position in their building is expendable, but we really are gonna to have to dig deep and find out if there's any way we can make any kind of cuts because 5.5 is a very hard ask for the middle-class community that we have. I think everyone's been getting a deal. I like five and a half. If you look at this chart, what we used to ask for and what we're stuck with now, I think five and a half percent is fair to ask the community for. That's where I'm at. I, I like the numbers chart. We had those positions are critical. <clears throat> All those the reading, the math, the council position, now more than ever, especially with some of the numbers, how well we've been doing with those things. How do we take that away from you? If we bring that number to the community and they say no, then we can say, the community said no, because I remember we had a conversation before. You can go up and ask for a number, and if it's a no, you have to go back down to is it two? You get a second chance, correct? And you go out at whatever the board would decide a second time. Let's go. That's where I'm at. I think we look at everything. We cannot spend without leaving possible. I think line by line by line, we look at everything. And, and, and it's that. not just a middle class community, it's a lower middle class community, and things are struggling. People, people struggle. 
Yeah, I, I agree. It's not an ask for building or padding any money, any, any fund balance. Um, but and we will look at everything. You know, we've got to find it. Very difficult with the addition of the positions. I, I would think people have to leave the community or lose their home or some of the elderly or anything because they can't afford to live there anymore and then we don't even get that. People people are leaving New York State because of this street. And if more people leave, we we have less people to this. I don't question the value of the positions that we have, but, but I've got to give Ron and, and the board credit. And Charlie, you, you, you let us do that. Going back three, four years ago, when the federal monies were made available, we, we clearly, clearly stated that we would be in this dilemma in future years. So it wasn't something that we just gave with, with no worry that in the future we have to scale back to some degree. So I, I value and I respect everything that we added, but we I think we I think we did an adequate job in informing the community that we're adding this position, we're enhancing our program. However, we're going to be faced with a difficult decision when that money's exhausted. And, and we've come to that point now. I'm not saying we need to cut everything that we added, but go back to what CJ said, I think we've got to show I'm I'm not in favor of five percent, but if we're going to do any kind any form of an increase, I think we need to show diligent effort that we made some adjustments to scale that back. If we need to go above the tax cap, one one and a half percent, I don't know. Maybe we could sell that. I don't think we can sell five percent in the community, and I think we've got to show them if we do scale back, what did we do? It's heartbreaking to do what we have to do, but. We have to show something in, in place. Of it. I mean, I hate to have it voted down. That's just my opinion. And I'm sorry, If it gets voted down, it goes back to the contingency, right? You get one other. The board, we would, I, I expect the board would reconvene and say the third Tuesday in June, then a second vote could, could happen. If that gets voted down, where are we? Then we're continuing. Then it's zero tax levy increase. Correct. If that one, so I would expect the second one. Not to put words into people's mouths, but you try for the to exceed the tax cap to to preserve these positions. If that doesn't work, okay, the community has spoken. You go for the two point one five percent or whatever that tax cap calculated number lands at, and that and that at that point would say mean those additional positions would be eliminated. But if that gets voted down, we're in serious trouble. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But if the you know. That's a tax cap that gets voted down in May. You have a second shot. Mm -hmm. If we go pre-COVID and, and we look at neighboring districts that went above the tax cap, I, I think history will show it divides the community and it became <clears throat> finger pointed at educators and teachers at programs at athletics at interscholastics, whatever it was, you can go through the three county area and when budgets were defeated, it, it tore communities apart. It's not an easy process if we do that. You're right. I'd love to give them everything. Anyway, I just I just want to reiterate what um Mr. Calvin said too. This 3.43% increase, that was to help maintain some of the newer programs. Without that, we're still looking at reduction. I mean, Mr. Reed is here, Ms. Machine is here. We've already talked about other areas, even if we got the tax. See the tech that we're still making cuts elsewhere to maintain. I mean, it's just, I just don't want you to think that there's fat out there to trim yeah. we're, we're lean and we're still cutting. What was the lowest number? Her number was actually a decrease to our foundation aid, which is, you know, shocking to me that it's a decrease. I've never seen it do anything but at least hold the line. Um, formula would say we should get less than what we are being paid right now. And that's what she's proposing. Districts don't are going to get what the formula says. Um, there's always been a safe harmless or hold harmless amount of 3%. Um, 
um, except for those years when it was frozen. Um, I think I looked at it with Mr. Staten, five of the 12 components are seeing a decrease in foundation age, which is, you know, that's five of 12 in, in OHM MOCs across the state, it might be 250 school districts that are seeing a decrease. And that's going to be very difficult for legislators to support. But that's not going to solve our problems if we get a 3% increase in foundation aid either. So. One of the, uh, the comments that's included in her release is that um, many districts are sitting on substantial fund balances. And, and this is, this is her recommendation to force some of those school districts that are sitting on millions of dollars to use up some of that money. We're not in that category. <laughs> but but because of that that issue, the number is the way it is. Yes. Her presentation today, they were four percent in reserves when she took office, and that she was adamant about getting that to fifteen percent. And there are a little over fifteen percent right now, and she is adamant about protecting that fifteen percent reserve. <laughs> so, if you take a look at ours, I think we were 11 or 12 percent right now. If you look at everything, our, our reserves, our unappropriated fund balance, everything all together. Um, and you've seen our numbers before compared to the others, um, components of OHM and our neighbors, Mount Markman, Frankfurt, Schuyler. We're at the very low end of percentage fund balance compared to our budget. One district lower than us. That district is getting significant foundation aid increases over the last two years. And again, next year, we'll see a nice bump it looked like. So um, we'll, we'll be at the end of the line pretty quickly. Dr. Kilgore, could I ask you a question? Sure, absolutely. And, and not to put you on the, you know, the hot seat. There are, there are a handful of districts in our BOCES faced with the same dilemma. Yes. So yes. we're not alone. Not alone. Um, I think there's going to be a significant number of schools in upstate New York who are going to be in the same position. And it's an unfortunate position to be in. To take a, to have to develop a budget uh, assuming no increase in foundation aid is a significant issue because you have to consider inflationary costs and increased expenses per child to educate them. But to have to try to calculate and build a budget with a potential decrease in equity, it's, it's really, really challenging to do. Um, and you're in excellent hands when it comes to leadership and finances. You know, the recommendations you're hearing, without having heard the entire presentation, I will tell you, just um, people who are really doing this work, you're getting outstanding advice and recommendations from very knowledgeable people. And it is challenging, it's a cool space. I've had to lead a school district through two supermajority votes. Um, it can be done, and it and you can do it in such a way that you don't have to divide your community. But it takes a lot of honest conversation from the community about what you want for your children and community's children. So um, anything that we can do at Lowe's is to help and support you, we're glad to do. That would be Thanks. nice, but they, we need to get the community involved and let them know exactly what they're facing. It's That's always a challenge. Mm -hmm. So how does that happen? Like, do I get on a megaphone on a bike and announce that? <laughs> well, on, on a serious note, we're talking about engaging the community. I don't know about you, but I see a lot of apathy in this community. Nobody's engaged or interested at all. I don't know who's going to come up to me and give me and, and prod me because I wanted a five and a half percent. It's a ghost town. So that may happen. I may be in the past. Um, it's, it's, it's like the Wild West here. But is there a way to engage the community? Maybe not at what we're facing, but how about all the good things happening here? Okay. How about like, like a smile or like, a, I mean, something to show people how good it is here. Now, like, oh, we're getting hosed by the governor again. Because that's everyone's story. But what can we do and look at all the cool stuff that's going down here and like, you know, confetti or something, you know, theoretically. <laughs> okay. Do you understand? I mean, you've been through this. So don't, how does this happen? Do we go down to Cliffs? Do you uh, go to the, is it a Kiwanis Club? Yeah. Like, what's going on? 
these because if these someone's going to cry to you about the numbers, it must be hanging out somewhere because <laughs> you're not in my house. So, no, and they're not here. You have, I think, that where you know, truly, really, I think that's where you turn right back around to your administrative team and say, What would be the plan to increase engagement in the conversation? David's going to text me later on. Dr. Kilburn, please don't ever speak in a board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, things that get our attention draw us into conversation. And you've got, like, I'm in and out of all the districts in the region, right? And I'm going to tell you that there's something incredibly special about the school district, about the deep caring you have for your kids. You worry about engagement, but look at how many people come to your concerts and look how many people come to your games. You have a strong basis of support. And it's not just the gender, it's not just the parents, it's the grandparents. So many people care deeply about the students of Sequoia and they care about their town and their village. I have no doubt that you can call attention to this matter in a way that to your point, leans on the fact that you're special and there's something really great to invest here in this district for these kids. You, you do great academically, you care deeply about the children, kids get individualized support, there's so many positive things to say about Sequoia Valley, and I think any chance you can give it, you give it because you all deserve it. And look at all—I mean, look at all the work you're doing here as volunteers. I just think that if any town can try to do things that maybe are oh, extra effort based, it's Sequoia Valley. I think you have a lot more support than maybe you're thinking through at the table, and maybe not, Tony, because your points are so on. You don't want to see a town divided. Nobody ever wants to see that ever. It's not worth it. Really, no, in some ways, you don't. You don't deal. But I think when you think about them. you think about Sequoia, I see a lot of town connected, and that that became evident through the search, you know, and, and came evident talking to people in the, in the school and the community. So, whatever we can do to help, will certainly help. But I think when it comes to your question of engaging people, and it comes to your concerns about division, I think you have two gentlemen here who care deeply about both of those issues, and an entire administrative team and teachers and unions who would. Who would also care deeply and don't want to see what you said happen. That's it for me on my soapbox. Thank you, Doctor. What's the next step? Well, we'll continue talking about the different parts of the budget, like the expenditure. We'll go over what is um, Judy had said, line by line. You know, I won't say this is what's in twelve forty one fifty, but I will say these are the ninety seven instructional positions. These are the sixty two non instructional positions. That's what our cost is for them. Um, contractually, we have a contract with our teachers. They're not instructional, or you know, it expires, or the contract um, is, will be renegotiated July or July one. Um, that's the biggest chunk, as we know, employee salaries and the benefits. Everything the the, the area that I've kind of not gotten into as much depth, and, and Judy had prompted with her comment a couple of meetings ago, you know, line by line, is like the contractual and the supplies. And you look at that, and we'll, we will look at that, you know, when we talk about contractual, we pay $200,000 for OT and PT services. That's the biggest chunk. $1.7 million is our contractual cost. We'll start with the biggest one is $200,000 for OT PT services. Our utility costs are $200,000 or whatever the number is. But you'll see there's a real item, a real cost to each one of those numbers. It's not... And if there was, you know, our fund balance would be climbing and climbing and climbing. Now it has over the last few years because of the pandemic money, and that was part of our plan. And we'll be happy to review that uh, with the board if they'd like to. You know, when we knew the amount of money, a little over $3 million in uh, pandemic relief funding that we were going to receive, we said we're going to add these positions. But we're also going to build some fund balance. And we've done those two things. As we were going through that process in the beginning, we said there will come the day when that money will not be available from the federal government, and those positions will either need to we will find need to find other resources, or we will have to eliminate those positions, and that's where we are at. And I know you and David, Mr. Staten, you've explored options to increase our leasing capabilities to outside agencies or programs. Yeah. And we're still in those discussions. Other revenues are, you know, eight hundred thousand on twenty-five million dollars, twenty-six million dollars is it, it's a drop in the bucket. It's we need big swings from either the state percent from the taxpayers is eighty-six thousand dollars. Um, so you know that is what we get. I think that you know, 
that's where we go as far as re reviewing and explaining the budget that you were presented tonight, breaking it down line by line, as Judy had, uh, had mentioned. But as Mr. Staten and Dr. Kilburn said, and, and the rest of the board, the rest of that is what else do we need to do differently this year to engage the people to get some feedback before the board decides in early to mid April, it's either going to be five and a half percent or it's going to be the tax levy limit, the tax cap, you know, get some feedback. Don't say on January 16th, it's five and a half percent. We need to get the feedback. You need to get the feedback and make the educated decision as the process rolls out over the next 60 to 90 days. Tony, I wanted to bring something up. Yes. You told me that you had gone back in the past and looked at some numbers on who actually comes and votes. And the numbers don't look at it being families, it's more seniors. Oh, you'd be surprised. You'd be very surprised. So, not sure very, senior very night is, but I mean. Mrs. Berg, you could probably help me on that. The, the, the population of people who vote, both in the, in all the elections, um, you would think a school budget would be dominated by families who have students in school. That's not the case. Because mm -hmm. it's the seniors who can't afford it and they come out and they want to say no because they can't afford it. That's why we need to engage the parents. The and that's so hard. I mean, students can't afford it. having trouble finding people in PTO. They're starting to get their back up again. Um, everybody's struggling to get people to help and come out and do anything. I used to think you could rally the elementary parents and we pass the budget, but and that's an eye opener. Yeah, it is. You're right. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Collin. At this point, we're going to move into the board meeting and take our presentation from Dr. Phillips and Tony Chubbins. So I'm not going to take too much of your time. I have a packet of goodies and I'll leave that up here. So you can all get that later if you want to. Um, so your BOCES is your educational cooperative, and every one of our school districts in the region becomes a member of that cooperative. And through the cooperative, you can purchase programs and services that are provided by BOCES employees or through other intermediary agencies um, at a rate wherein you get money back from the state. So this becomes part of what's called your expense-based aid in terms of your spending and your budget the future. So what you spend out, you get a percentage of back. And we try to leverage our voices across the region on behalf of the different component school districts. Sorry about that. I'll be able to get on my back. On the different uh, component school districts, but also to benefit the region's children as a whole. And in our VOCES, it's 500 square miles. It runs as far north as Remsen, as far south as Brookfield, to as far east as Utica, and as far west as, I don't know, because we're risking the Westmoreland. One of them is more west than the other. I'm going to say Westmoreland. <laughs> Just to say it. So, any, so anyhow, it's 550 square geographic miles, and there's about 22,500 children that um, receive the benefits of those services either directly or indirectly through the school districts who receive the benefit of programming and hopefully some uh, incentives and financial support. So, as part of the cooperative, I want to make sure to invite uh, members here. We're having our Korean Technical Education Open House on March 13th. Our annual meeting where board members are invited to attend, I really encourage you to come and it would be great to see if we'll ask for support. Um, come to our annual meeting on April 3rd. Um, you get uh, the kids in the culinary program cook for you, but that's where we talk about our BOCES budget. Our BOCES budget is something that you all vote on, which is different than a component budget where the whole community votes on it. So your board members here uh, vote on the BOCES budget and they vote on what's called the administrative portion of the budget. And that is a fixed budget that we have to adhere to, and that is one that you vote on. So that budget date is April 16th, and if you come to the dinner on April 3rd, you'll have a presentation of the budget. It won't be as great as Charlie Town's presentation of budgets, but it will be interesting. <laughs> so I invite you to those dates. Inside your folders is a service directory. The service directory just kind of lays out the different types of programs and services that BOCES provides. And I'm not going to take you through that work. You guys have a lot of things to work on tonight. Um, but if you're ever curious about what's offered at a BOCES or what kind of programs we have, it's there as a resource. Most people, when they make a BOCES, think of special education. 
They think of career and technical education, but we provide a wide array of programs and services, even behind the scenes kind of stuff, like printing out your brochures and newsletters and having school PR staff that support you or maintaining websites are examples of some OSI services that we provide. Considering the regional outlook, and we talked about, the, I talked about the 22,500 children in the region. Um, the OCs being a cooperative relies on every school district's membership and participation. Every school district sends to meetings at OCs, uh, principals, uh, your school counselors, your special ed directors, your CSE chairs, assistant super directors, if, they, if they're available in districts, and your superintendents, and they all come in and out of the OCs for monthly meetings. And in those monthly meetings, they talk about the needs of the children, the needs of the district, and what they think the needs are across the region. And that's how we start to build and develop and improve upon our programs and services. In our region, uh, last year, the chief school officers, those are your superintendents of schools, identified um, so post-secondary outcomes for all students as a regional priority. So that's really where we work um, to leverage the region to help ensure that all students in our United Republic of Madison OCs region have an opportunity for career development, job shadow or internships, uh, college credentials, we're starting to work on micro-credentials, um, residencies or internships, career and technical education experiences, college degree programs. Now we offer a lot of that in our K-Tech and our career tech and our school to career programs at the OCs, but we also entered into partnerships with MVCC. So now we're able to provide through that partnership opportunities. Uh, we're just building now transition services for students with special needs through our school to career program and a grant with MVCC. So we can start making sure that all students in the region, the students, all students with disabilities in the region have opportunities to explore uh, jobs, micro-credentials and college where appropriate. Um, and we also have added through our partnership with MVCC, um, opportunities for children in alternate education to also receive um, career counseling, career education, and college credits. So we're really trying to take that to the entire region to help ensure that kids in this region can earn college credits, can have career opportunities, and will transition from the schools. So that feature that tonight. Another uh, regional initiative is looking at the health of our children. We had a summit last year to talk about this. And one thing that we've really been focusing on are mental health support. So we have a coaster called the Community Schools Coaster, which provides a wide array of um, wraparound supports for, for children and for families um, and to support them in schools. And schools can kind of pick and choose which types of wraparound supports might work for them. And there is some portion of OCZ that comes back on that. And we've been seeing that really take off. Um, but that doesn't mean we only work for BOCI. So lately, I've been talking with the chief school officer. She said, let's talk, let's reach out to Oneida County, which I'll be doing next, to see what we can do to maybe coordinate some services with the county on behalf of children. So that's some BOCs this year in a nutshell. But I just thought I'd come to say hello again and to briefly run over some of those things and answer any questions if you have. Not any questions. <laughs> Audience. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate thank it. You, thank, thank you. 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 On February 6th at 5 o'clock. Our curriculum instruction subcommittee met last week. And we had all three principals there, and Tracy Pacini and Michelle Babby was there to represent the, uh, the instructional unit. And some of the topics of discussion were the, the science of reading. In fact, they were having another workshop right now tonight, the science of reading in collaboration with West Morley, and that's in our auditorium. That's why Mr. Puckham and Mr. Madden are not here there, but like that. Workshop right now. We discussed the science of reading div divals, three through eight regional assessments, and we compared our, our data to some of the local component districts. And um, Ms. Machini discussed the whole process of divals and identifying students who get rather than funding. And we also discussed um, grading for equity, which is a book on a new a new lens for grading. And in fact, that, that was an initiative that went to most this past summer. And all the administrators read the book. We thought it was very eye-opening. So 
we've offered that to our teachers on a voluntary basis so they don't have to read it. But today was one of the first meetings of the middle school. There's a lot of good discussion about the process of grading. And the next um, next subcommittee is the School Boards Institute. And there is a meeting next Thursday. Thursday, January 25th. Okay, okay which on is at 6 30. So Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair and I will be participating in that meeting. And our final subcommittee to report on is the policy committee, and we will be meeting January 30th at 5 30 for our next board meeting to review policies. Any questions on any of the subcommittee reports? I know that um, and me and Patty had talked at the end of the um, curriculum and instruction meeting. We were wondering if we had, if you saw like the teachers that were interested in reading the book and actually took a copy of the book. Like we were wondering basically who they were, like to see if you see more younger teachers gravitating towards wanting to see younger in, in their teaching career. Um, looking at that book, or if it's more maybe seasoned teachers that were looking at, at being interested in it, or if it was just all over the board. So it's so. a good question because I did. So today was the first meeting that we had that we have with middle school teachers. Mm -hmm. There were two what I call what I call veteran teachers on mm -hmm. near the edge of their career. There were probably two, two or three in the middle, and then there was probably at least one and a student teacher. And so it was a little oh, okay. spectrum. Okay. Which was interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions on the subcommittee? Okay. Logo update? Sure. So we've been working with Josh Asman, the graphic designer from OH and BOCES, and he recently included taking all measurements for the, the windows. So we have the window decals and banners have been ordered. In fact, they might be here. As early as this week, the decals is lined up on the front doors of our entrances. So when those are here and, and the banners, they'll be displayed on our main entrances. Um, the, uh, the 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 whole PR launch will be happening. Keeps getting pushed back, but it looks like right now we're on track for February. That will include the press release. That will include the the launch of our new website. So I think I shared with you the, the website. It's going to be there's a whole new format for the website, so we're excited about that. Um, there's a video that OCS has been working on. They've been taking some footage of some of the events, so we're excited to see that. So all that will unveil right around February one. And as far as upcoming events, just before we down the agenda, next actually tomorrow, 17th, uh, Waterville is hosting a community presentation about vaping and other facts. So we have been invited to participate um, in school in that community forum. And then on October, sorry, sorry, February 1st, our high school will hold an assembly regarding distracted driving. We connected with um, a lady who, her story is that her father was killed in, in an accident by a distracted driver. Who was, now she goes around this, the country providing free demonstrations to students about the importance of remaining cognitive and focused on your driving and not being distracted. So we found them, we've, we've helped, when I was at Oregon Bowles, we say showcase that was everywhere and from the very end of the education. So I feel very mad to see this. I feel it's here. And I'm going to answer. Thank you, Mr. State. Any old business from the board? If not, I will move to the agenda. I will read 7.1 through 7.13. If anybody has any questions or concerns or comments, please bring it to my attention. 7.1 is asking for the approval of a resignation. 7.2 is the approval of an appointment of a school bus attendant. 7.3 is the approval of a resignation from extracurricular activities. 7.4 is the approval of additional athletic appointments. 7.5 is the approval of a retirement. 7.6 is the approval of the acceptance of the of addition to the workplace violence prevention policy statement. 
7.7 is the approval of the budget modification. 7.8 is the approval of the donation. 7.9 is the approval of our extra extra classroom activity report. 7.10 was the approval of our treasurer's reports of balances dated December 2023. 7.11 is the approval of a resolution authorizing payment of our bills as approved by the claims auditor. 7.12 is the approval of our minutes of the January 2nd meeting. And 7.13 is the approval of the Committee on Special Education and Committee on Preschool Special Education recommendation. Just clarification on the last two for 7.14, it was basketball, not baseball. You change it, put it on this agenda that's on the table. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read this. No, that you didn't have to. Okay. At the bottom, it was just basketball instead of baseball. It was originally mailed to you as uh, baseball, but it's basketball as the sport modified. Okay. That's all. I just want to clarify that. Anybody have any questions or concerns? I have a couple of comments if I could very quickly. Absolutely. So, number 0.5, retirement approval of retirement. So, Beth Thomas submitted her retirement date. It won't be until the fall, but. um. I just want to say, you know, we're, we're very happy for her, but we're sad as a district procedure. Oh, she's been an anchor of our teaching staff, pillar of the, of the school district. She's just an outstanding person. She's been a great role model to students and staff, and she'll be a big loss um, in the elementary school. And then on 7.7 .7, approval of budget modification, I just want to reiterate what I believe it was further stated earlier that even the sports groups is just having um, difficulty finding. Volunteers. So the sports boosters, um, we're going to approve. Hopefully that they, you know, they provide some money to all purchase some new school uniforms, and they are a huge source of, of support in the school district, especially obviously athletics. And at the end of the school year, the you know, sports boosters, president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, are all retiring. You know, those officers, all, all their children who have retired or graduated from the <laughs> district. Um, and they've been hanging on for years. So this is the year that they said, you know, we need some, we need some new faces. Um, Ms. Kidd, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you agreed to top up and take the secretary position. And usually it's not school staff that take these positions, but Ms. Kidd has been a supporter of the sports boosters for many years, and she doesn't want to see that organization go away. So um, this is just a, a plea to anyone out there, anyone watching at home who do need volunteers for the uh, sports research organization because again, has been a strong supporter of the district for many years. Oh, you're quite welcome. I also would like to comment on 7.5 and the uh, retirement of Mrs. Thomas, who made a significant impact on the lives of many, many, many students in this community. So we're deeply appreciative. I have a question at 7.1. Um, we lost a school bus driver and laborer. Did we lose them to another district? No, we lost, lost them to another company where he will earn more. Okay, but not a, not a school district. Not a school district. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? May I have a motion to approve 7.1 mm -hmm. through 7.13? So good. Thank you. Second, Judy. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Motion, consent agenda is approved. Ms. Lenny's topics? Board members? Yes. I know that we're going to go on the 1st of February. We talked a little bit about maybe getting a Red Fox like mascot costume. Um, like an official school one. As opposed to the Angry Birds Halloween costume, which I'm grateful that brought brings. But I didn't know if that's something that we can look at, maybe as a possibility, or maybe the fall or the sports company. That's that kind of so, um, There was like a Red Hawk type mascot costume, um, just like in the school. So, I'm not, listen, I'm not talking about the money. I'm just saying it's a good idea. I'll Great send idea. it to you. Yeah. Uh, someone's going to have to move out if we get it. <laughs> we'll work it out. I'll, I'll, I'll donate money to us. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, they don't wear it too. Well, you know, they don't make it that thing. Plus, I'm short. Sure. <laughs> well, we'll work it out. I'm sure we'll work it out. Maybe Jamie Allen can wear it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to check it. I can't I can't check it. I Last three digits are six nine nine. Yeah. Oh, and that upside down. Right there. Well, that's what this I'll show Wow. <laughs> Um, just before we adjourn, I, I just checked with Mr. State and uh, in particular, when we discuss the budget and we have that budget workshop, we welcome your input and we welcome your concerns. Um, Give us your insight as to um, if we're missing something, if there's something we need to know, um, we need to educate ourselves and we appreciate you. Absolutely. Please feel comfortable. We appreciate everything. I need a motion to adjourn. Mr. Sacco, second. It can only look one way. <laughs> All in favor? Thank you. you got it, Murray? Okay. Please stand adjourned. Okay. Um, Beautiful.